G'day everyone, this is Jill from Australia who's fronting up for the third genius, Jenny Oz, Hangout on Air. Today we'll be asking panellists to share details of their favourite resources for online research in Australia. We won't end up with a comprehensive list but hopefully we'll find some new sites or be reminded of others that we've forgotten about. We'll try to avoid pay to view sites and concentrate on those that are um, good for cheapskates like me who like to view things for free. As I hope we eventually get more um, panellists than the 10 spots allocated by Google, I might ask... Oh, oh guess what? We're just going to close that. Sorry, I had myself playing through um, the community page where I'd like people to make comments. That's why we got that um, feedback. So I've turned that off and um, I'll watch it on my tablet. Now, I was up to saying that if we get more than 10 people, I'll ask the panellists to retire gracefully after they've done their bit. But at the moment, we've got plenty of spots for people to come online. So I hope not too many people have had a sleep in or I hope people in North America can tear themselves away from their turkey preparations. So first of all, I'm going to see who's uh, joined me today, get them to say a quick good day, and then we will ask people to tell us about some of their favourite sites. I'm hoping that they can actually get a handle on the screen sharing um, function of Google+. Plus. If they can't, we'll talk them through it. We've now got another lady called Donna who's Join, oh. welcome Donna. <laughs> but first of all, I'm going to ask Anne to say hello. Anne's a little bit in the dark, but you'll be able to hear her quite well. Okay, so good, Anne, morning. Hello. Uh, good morning. Hello, good morning. I'm Anne. I live in Ballarat, which is a regional city in Victoria, Australia. Um, and I'll talk uh, a little later on about resources for those who are. Um, searching for their family in Victoria using the Public Record Office. So good morning Fantastic. from Ballarat. Fantastic. And hello to Chris. Go for it, Chris. You might be muted. You may have muted yourself. I haven't muted you. Yeah. No, I, I did have there we go. Sorry, yeah, I um, had trouble with response for it. So, uh, yep. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Chris. I'm in Rockhampton, Central Queensland, and um, yeah, I'm just uh, in, going to enjoy this session. I've I've got a few sites that I'd uh, be interested in telling you about later on. Great. Thank you. Hi, Jenny. Jenny, your Hi, turn. I'm Jenny, uh, Jenny Joyce. Yep, hello. Can you see me? We can see you loud and clear. Well, we can see you. I <laughs> no, hear you loud and clear. Okay. All right. Jenny we'll Joyce, um, I'm in Sydney. That's good. Uh, is everything okay? Everything's yep. fine. Um, I've got a couple of ideas of websites that I can share to people. Good. We're going to come back. Depending on what other people show. That's fantastic. Thank you, Jenny. And Donna, hello. Hello, Jill. Donna, hi. Would you like to just tell us who you are and we can hear you, we can see you? Brilliant. Well, that's that's a good start because I've tried to join before and it hasn't worked. I think I've finally got a handle on it. Um, I'm in the Great. greater western outskirts of Sydney uh, near the Blue Mountains. And I, I'm really not sure what the topic is, so um, <laughs> I'm not sure what well, I'm supposed to be contributing, but I'm sure I can I can put some input in there somewhere. Right. Well, it's it's online resources for Australian research, Brilliant. and we're hoping okay. that people will uh, share a couple of their favourites. So okay. Chris has asked if she could go first, so I'm going to go give the uh, floor to Chris and uh, ask her to tell us about one or two of her favourite online sites. I'll keep a record of these and um, post them in the blog like I did last time. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yep. Great. <laughs> Rightio. So um, 
I'm going to uh, share my screen. So this is the first time I've done this. Gee, my computer's a little bit slow. I am. I do apologise. It's um, not responding when I want it to. Um, uh, screen share con. <laughs> While, it, while you're waiting, perhaps you can tell us the name of the site. Yeah. Okay, so um, the first site that, of course, is my absolute favourite is uh, the newspaper site on, on Trove. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm quite sure that, uh, you know, everybody just absolutely adores this site. And um, basically, uh, with it, there's uh, all the major newspapers from around the the, uh, the capitals of the states of Australia and gradually they're adding more and more newspapers all the time. Uh, here we go and my screen share is going to come up and it's going to be the wrong site that I'm not talking about but I will just change to that. Okay, so, <laughs> so here's Trove and uh, the newspaper site on Trove and um, the thing that I find absolutely fantastic about this is that it's a community effort. So um, there's optical character recognition which is going through automatically and scanning the newsprint, but then anyone from anywhere can go in and uh, fix up the uh, mistakes from the OCR. And I, I just think it is just so wonderful that um, the information's available, but then it's also getting people together to fix these things up. So, so I really, really, really wanted to talk about Trove um, because I just think it is so fantastic. And I just have two other um, sites, if that's okay, to share with you. And one is um, the Central Queensland Family History Association site, and. I must admit um, I'm a little bit biased because I look after this site myself but I, I really wanted to share it with people because we have some really wonderful things on here. Obviously there's home pages and everything but there is a section here in the middle which is our articles and indexes and down towards the bottom we have um, indexes, we have some cemeteries on there, we have schools, publicans, Publicans shipping, where uh, ships came into Rockhampton, post office directories, residents. Uh, we have uh, an index of a Central Queensland history uh, that was written by a man called Bird. But one of the really fabulous things that we've got that actually intersects with Trove is our scrapbook index. Now, um, Trove only goes up to 1954 uh, for many of the papers, whereas our scrapbook index fills in some of the space between that. And uh, you can go in here and you can search by name, place, keyword, and basically it's an index of all the newspaper clippings that our members have collected over the years. And it doesn't have to just be names from central Queensland. If I found things from uh, from Mirraburrah in in uh, more southern Queensland. I found mm -hmm. things about all sorts of places here. So um, it's always worth going and having a look in there. Fantastic! That I didn't know yes. about that one. That that is so good, and I bet you're so proud of it. I am. I am. Even even though all I've done is put it up here, other people have done all the hard work yeah. in, in, in collating the information. And there's one yeah. one new page that I just want to tell you about. I only just created it this morning. <laughs> um, yeah. Our uh, society went out to our heritage village markets on Sunday to promote our society and to sell raffle tickets for our Christmas raffle. And one of the men who came along to buy some tickets from us told us that he had photos from the SS border coming to Australia in 1921. His grandfather had come on that ship and had taken photos of the passengers and he wanted to put them online but he didn't know how. So um, yesterday I went to the society, he, got, he had given us a disc and this morning I have put these photos up um, I'll put a link through from our, our society page, 
but there are fabulous yes. photos of the passengers and crew aboard this ship. I, I, I wish my, my grandparents were on this oh, ship. They're beautiful. It's so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is yep. fabulous. It's just lovely. And I, what I think is so wonderful is that your society is actually sharing because it will bring people to your society. It's one of my bugbears that sometimes societies want to keep everything in the society and uh, you know not send them out to a broader audience. So congratulations. And now Thank you. after you Thank finish, you. I've just got to... You can keep talking for it if you wish. I'm fine. Oh, you're done like a dinner. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you so much for sharing those. What I will ask you to do is after you've now you've presented, I've put Trove's um, URL up. But if you can go and put the links to your um, sites up on the community page, um, they'll be there then for everyone to see. So that's Most fabulous, certainly. Chris. Thank you. All right. Thank who you. would like to be next? Who'd like to give me a wave? Jenny, how about you? Are you ready? Are you have you muted yourself? Oh yes, I was muted. Yep. Yes, I was okay. muted. Okay. Now I'll see if I can share this. Yep. Um, it's the green arrow thing up on the left. Now are you seeing a screenshot? Mm. It's no, the Australian yes. Cemeteries coming. Index. I'm trying to show. Ah, it's coming. Yes. Okay. Great. Tell us a bit about that. Okay. This has hundreds of different uh, cemeteries included and it's not everything, it's been done presumably by volunteers but if you do a search you can see some of them even have images, little photo icons and if we look at one example we have the uh, burial for John Samuel Wenburn it's being a bit slow to load this page The We've got an image of his grows. headstone there. <laughs> We've got details of the burial. And there's even a little thing that says other sources. And if you click on that, you get links to where it thinks are uh, his uh, birth record and death record. You might sometimes get something from the Ryerson Index and stuff like that. It's an absolutely fantastic site if you are lucky enough to find your person there. Yeah, I must say I found quite a few in um, in the country, rural areas of New South Wales, and it's wonderful. It saves you going out and finding the um, gravestone, but then it is nice to do so. That's fantastic. So, um, would you want to tell us anything more about that, or have you had success with that site? Oh, uh, I've used it ver for various things, yes. but um, mm -hmm. I'm just really impressed by the work and the large number of uh, entries that are in there, and I think it's something that everybody else should look at. Yep, yep, for sure. That's great. Now, do you want to hop in with another site, or will I go to someone else, and then we shall come back to you? Pop into um, because pop I'm somebody else. Pop one over to someone else. Anne, are you ready to share? Someone suggested on the chat that have you got a light in the room you can turn on, but maybe not while you're talking. I've got, I've, I've got my desk light and the overhead lights. I've got a window. I don't know why it's oh. so gloomy. So I'm so oh, sorry. never mind. No, never mind. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yes, no. So I've got no idea what the, what's happened with the the light, and it was fine last time. Uh, the sh site I'm going to share is um, the Public Record Office of Victoria. Um, now, why am I? Oh dear. Why is it not? Can you see that? No, I haven't done it right. Uh, hang on, I think no, it uh, might be. Oh no. So it's just the green arrow. Oops, a day. Green arrow, screen share, and what I'm getting top. is green share, and you should get. Oh, you ne have you? Getting... You've got your browser open, obviously. Yes. Oh, there it is. Okay, try that. Start Beautiful. screen share. Okay. Okay. There. Okay. It's going to come. So, prov.vic.gov.au is the public record office of Victoria. It's the Victorian Archives, and um, they've put a lot of 
excellent resources on. And the way to get into the resource, so when you get there and you get quite a large screen that um, you sort of wonder how what's going to happen, you go to this middle tab called Start Your Research and then you scroll down again so it's always all hidden and you've got some excellent links for Ships and Shipping which is the shipping indexes, Wills and Probate and they've just expanded the indexes to go from 1841 to 2007. So if Ooh. your person left a will, the wills are digitised up to 1925, so from 1841 to 1925, most of the wills and probate files are digitised. And they're going to increase the digitisation, I think, up to 1937, thanks to assistance from familysearch.org. They've uh -huh. done a partnership. Um, and so they're expanding all the time their digitisation uh, and their indexing. They're redeveloping their website at the moment, but that won't be available till the end of next year. So at the moment, it's not. Um, it's excellent, but it's not totally compliant with new new formats and things. But if you go to Wills and Probate, it's an online index, yep. and okay. uh, you put in your family name and whatever you know. Um, I put in my family name and I'm just putting in part oh, oh just typing into the wrong keyboard. Um, search search and then you scroll down and you get uh, as you can see an occupation, a residence, a date of death, a file number, and then you can either order the record to view in the um, public record office or if it's digitised, uh, so I don't think I'm bringing up any here that have been digitised, um, then then you'll get a link to the digitised effort. And what's the cost yeah. involved? They're free. That's wow! Free. Oh. So it's really a brilliant resource. <laughs> um, and uh, then ships and shipping, if you go to, you've got several indexes, whether they were unassisted, assisted, and we've also got some outward. It's all pretty patchy, um, it, uh, especially the outward passengers. But uh, let's, if you have a look at index to assisted British immigration, and I'll type in a name, just, uh, just a name, my name, <laughs> and <laughs> it'll give me 50 records, but I can get up to 5,000. And you can see there you get the given name, the age, when they came, the ship, and then you get a book and a page number. And that from that you can go to the microfiche of the shipping list. So uh, it's an absolutely brilliant resource and essential if you're doing research for forebears in Victoria. So yeah, I hope that was of some help, and I'll I'll leave it there and let you go to somebody else. Oh, I think that's that's wonderful. Thanks. It's it's so good. We've had someone from Queensland, someone from um, Victoria, and uh, I'm going to ask someone from New South Wales now. Donna, do you are you ready? Am I putting you on the spot? No, no I'm fine. No. I found. I'm actually watching you on my iPad, and I've got right. here. So I just found yeah. what I was doing while you were talking. Um, I've used a, a site a couple of times called Internet History Resources. The oh, website yeah. is www.ihr.com.au. I can't show it to you because I don't know how to do that bit yet. Um, it is a paid okay. service with all their records, but it only costs $40 for the year. And I found by joining it just the once, I found everything I needed in that $40, $40 worth. I got more than $40 worth out of it actually um, and then I, I discontinued my membership. Um, it's got quite a few records on it. If The most beneficial to me was the fact that I knew that my great grandparents, for example, had to have been on an electoral roll somewhere but Ancestry everywhere else didn't have them. Um, by accessing internet history resources I was able to actually find the original copies of the um, electoral roll for the place that they lived on the far south coast, New South Wales, and there they were on the electoral roll. Now these were rolls that were, are not on Ancestry. 
because as we know, Ancestry mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have everything. It's journey. It's, um, and yes. this is the only place that I found them, and it gave my grand, uh, great grandmother's middle name, which was a piece of information that was missing. Um, she's still a mystery, of course. Fantastic. But the only place that she exists is a on that electoral roll, and b as a name on her daughter's marriage certificate, and we have no other <laughs> records of her existence. So that was a big find for us. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. They, they do have quite a few. Yeah, I've other actually brought brought it yeah, up. I've brought up a screenshot yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and if you you scroll down there and have a look, I, I got my forty dollars worth out of it for that for that year. And um, yeah. you know, if I need anything else, I can I rejoin, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was valuable for me anyway. Yeah. Oh, good. And and uh, on the screenshot now, you can see the sort of records, directories, electoral rolls, land records, general miscellaneous mining. It people can read. So it's people worth going people. and having a look. Yeah, just fill in that little gap if you can't find it anywhere else. Yeah, fantastic. That's so good. Well, I might come back to you. I'll let you do a little bit more searching. Um, no one else has joined us, have they? I don't know. They're all shrinking violets. There are about 50-odd people who said they were coming or maybe were coming. 20-odd 20, 20 said they were coming. Um, I don't know whether I'll steal Jenny's thunder. I'm going to just show you quickly the Ryerson Index. Um, what is interesting is that Jenny and I are both members of a society that had a member called Joyce Ryerson. And my screen isn't sharing. We'll try again. It's not happening. Anyway, the Ryerson Index, that's www.ryersonindex.org. And what it is, it's an index to death notices and obituaries in Australian newspapers. Um, a team, of, what happened was a number of years ago, the Dead Person Society was, I don't know, doing something. Jenny might be able to sort me out on this. Um, looking for old um, a bit, uh, death notices and, and Joyce piped up and said, oh, I've saved the Sydney Morning Heralds in my laundry. And so was born an indexing group that is now called the through the auspices of the Dead Persons Society in New South Wales. Um, it's now called the Ryerson Index and it indexes, I'm just bringing this up, um, the numbers aren't there. Uh, in, for instance, in the Sydney Morning Herald, if I can scroll down, oh, look, there are just so many papers. I can't tell you that, you know, so the Queen, Queen B&A just got 471 records. The Singleton Argus, there are 2,563 records. Uh, the Campbelltown, MacArthur Chronicle, the Albury Border Mail for you know, all states, the Capital Dailies, here are the, here are the numbers. The Sydney Morning Herald has 1,763,080 and 80 records indexed. So if you've got someone who died, or you think they died in New South Wales, between 1940 and this week, you can, and they had a um, death notice or a funeral notice in the uh, Sydney Morning Herald, or you think they did, you can go to the Ryerson Index and look for their details. It will give you a link to the appropriate um, edition of the newspaper, whether it's a Sydney Morning Herald or one of the other um, several new, well, lots of newspapers that are indexed. I'm going to try again for my, to share this screen because I just don't know what I'm doing that's wrong. Um, it, it's been wonderful I, I because do, you can do. use this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, You've got I've it up. Managed to share it. I've managed to share it if you wanted to. There you go. Yep, there we are. There we are. Yeah, um, and if, do you think you could bring the search page up, please? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, uh, yeah, certainly. We're showing the coverage here, but. If you've got an unusual surname like one of mine, like my P-U-S-E-L-L, -L, if you plug Pusel in to this um, search screen here, do you mind plugging in P-U-S-E-L-L? -L? Oh. P-U-S-E-L? -S 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 no, P-U-S-E-L-L. -L. 
S E W L. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyone well, with this surname is related to me, and it's been wonderful to check and see if Mum's cousins have actually dropped off their perch, <laughs> or to find other cousins, as everyone listed here is related to me. Um, so I can go and find either online or on microfiche at the State Library or the National Library the newspaper that um, is referenced here. And some of these death notices don't say much at all, but some of them are just absolute treasures. Um, they give all sorts of uh, information. So what, what we have is we've got the name of um, Mum's cousin Edna, she, that's her married name, Field. There's my grandmother, Ethel Jane Pusel. Um, and they've got her, um, she's indexed under her maiden name as well as her um, married name, Duncan. Just lots and lots of people. So that is an absolute gem. So once you've done, found, an, uh, if you found it on the Sydney Morning Herald something, you can actually go straight to Trove or if these newspapers are indexed on Trove um, before 1954, you can go straight to them and find the notice. The other place you can go is if it's a Fairfax newspaper, you can, for free, you can go to the Fairfax news store and um, find the original notice there and they're uh, indexed right up to today from about the early 90s and you can get indexes, you can get access to the newspapers also, uh, some of them online through the national and state libraries. So, you know, together with Trove and our BDM indexes and the cemetery indexes, this is another wonderful resource. So thank you, Anne, for showing that and I'll put that link on the community page for everyone to see. Chris, are you, no, wait a sec, we might go back to Jenny. Oh, Jenny, are you Jill? ready for another go? Yes, Anne? Sorry. Chris, no, it's Chris, yes. Chris talking. Um, Pauline's yep. trying to get in and she seems to be having some problems and I tried oh, okay. to send her another I'll, invite but she'd like you to I'll, send her another yeah, invite. I'll invite her again. I'll do that so, right now. So can I talk about something else while... Um, yes, go for it. <laughs> while we're doing that one. Okay, She's so, invited um, again. Oh, good. Oh, good. Hopefully, that will uh, will get her get her on. So, the the next yep. site that I actually wanted to talk about, um, because I did get together a few just um, to be sure that we had enough, um, is a site that I'm going to now, and it's called Bonzel. And Bonzel is the Digital Atlas of Australia, and there are thousands and thousands of uh, photos on Bonzel. They're not always um, old photos, but there are lots and lots of old photos. And you can search or you can uh, you can browse. And if you have a look down here, you can go by cities, towns, villages, localities, deserts, forest reserves, uh, beaches, capes, gorges, states and territories, roads, Huts, caves, boars, great for outback research, lighthouses, homesteads, waterfalls. It, it really is wonderful it, and it's a site where people um, put their photos up to share that are photos of places of Australia. Oh, wow. Mm. I didn't know that one. I've learnt something. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> It, it is. It's a fabulous site. No, so you have to you have to sign in. Who do you know who's behind it? Just some enthusiastic person, um, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I I don't yeah. I don't believe you have to you don't have to pay or anything like that. And I think mm -hmm. you only have to sign in if you want to upload photos. Okay. Fantastic. That's, That's a really great good one to, one to check out. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Jenny, are you ready with another contribution? Jenny? Ah, here she is. Yeah, great. Jenny, are you muted? Jenny's showing us a New South Wales state record site, which is the equivalent of um, Prov that Anne showed us for Victoria. How's that? Am I unmuted now? You're you're unmuted now. 
right, with my handset rather than just the hangout that was muted. So, yes, state records has wonderful indexes to all sorts of things. Most of the time it's just indexes, not original records, but some of the very early convict records are original records. If you scroll, there is one general key name search that searches many, but not all of the indexes. But if you scroll down, you can see the kinds of things that are covered. One of the things is convicts, and that will search for certificates of freedom, uh, tickets of exemption from government, labour, etc., etc., as you can see. Or there's this wonderful sentence beyond the seas that covers convicts who arrived to 1801, um, trying to get it to come up. And you, when it does come up, you can search by convict name or you can search by ship or a sentence or a variety of other things. And then you can actually see images of the original um, registers, etc. Now, they were rescanned with the exception of one um, one particular data set, they were all scanned for their lovely crisp colour digital images, not just horrible black and white um, microfilm images. But there's all sorts of wonderful things that we have finally come up with. Uh, um, uh, what's the name? Um, blah, 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 blah. The search screen. So, yeah. It's fantastic, but there's other things. Yeah, we finally got the search screen up. Um, so, but there's all sorts of wonderful things. And if you are planning a trip out, you can therefore get, you know, plan what you're going to actually look at, whether it be films or original records, and have your list before you go out to records, and use your uh, time most efficiently. That's good. Yeah, the, the um, state records in New South Wales is a little way out of the uh, inner metropolitan area. For, so for some people, it's um, quite a journey. Pack a picnic lunch because there's no food on site. <laughs> is that right, Jenny? No. And we see. Absolutely. We seem to have lost Jenny. You can get a cup of tea or coffee, yeah. but no food. <laughs> Jenny, what about the um, my my favourite, the divorce files? Do you want to talk about those? Just tell people that they're available. No. Okay. <laughs> they are. Um, I generally go into those not through the indexes online. Mhm. Mm but uh, if I go back to the home, oh, here we go. I usually go through Archives Investigator to find divorce records mm -hmm. and I do a simple search like the keywords Brock Bank and divorce. Yep. And then I get details of what holdings the state records have. These aren't available online. And it would be impossible to put some of them online. I was in there one day and a woman had a divorce paper that was probably eight in, her pile was probably eight inches high. Um, but they're just um, incredible, the things that you can find in those divorce records. Yeah, I did Including just, one I was looking yes. at last week where the woman had made up all these accusations and the uh, judge yeah. therefore did not allow the divorce to go ahead. Oh, right. <laughs> That's a bit tragic. Yeah, I read, I read one just recently and the judge ordered her to go back to her husband, yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, they have birth certificates in there sometimes, marriage certificates, all, copies of you know, all sorts of stuff. So that, that's yep. great. Thanks, Jenny. Um, that's New South Wales State Records, and Jenny might pop the URL onto the um, Genios community. Um, now, let me see. Um, Anne, have you got another gem to share? 
Uh, yes, um, I can share both the New South Wales and the uh, Victorian um, birth death marriages indexes because what we in Australia do really well is our vital records and I think probably um, our counterparts overseas aren't, aren't nearly as lucky. So I've just shared, I don't know if it's up, the yes. New South Wales Registry of Birth Death Marriages. Yes. Is that showing? It is. Okay, so you go to family history, birth and death records. And it's finding its way. Someone needs to Slowly. Uh, sorry, we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Always waiting. Um, while well, that's winding its way, then Victoria has the same thing, bdm.vic.gov.au. Unfortunately, they charge to, well, they don't charge to search the indexes, but they do charge you to review the results. So you can uh, search your family history, but what Victoria does very well in Queensland also is you can buy the family his an image of the family history certificate online with PDF, instant gratification for $20. <laughs> Uh, it can make it very expensive because you can yes. buy it straight away. But it is terrific to be able to do your research. So there you search the historical index. And, Sorry, um, I actually... And you can put in a name. I'll put in flower right. And you can choose to search all of them. And you can give other details too to narrow down your search. <coughs> um, and we're waiting for that one. And there's a customer alert and there'll be fees information. But anyway, we got 184 matches as 10 separate pages. So that cost me $9 to view. But I can narrow it down uh -huh. and find the right An alternative way to get um, birth, deaths and marriages is, of course, through Ancestry.com or through the digger indexes that are available in libraries. They've got the Pioneers Index and there used to be also microfiche available in libraries and things like that. So the Pioneers Index, the Federation Index and so on are free ways to access it. Or if you know what you're looking for and you can narrow down your search, then you could you know, spend a dollar to look at the index results and order the certificate for another $20, which is really good. Right, right. So we've got New South <laughs> Wales up. That's, that was that Sorry? was really good inf that was really good information about Victoria for me because yesterday I read a blog post that um, intimated that one had to pay to search Victoria um, actually cough up money before you actually put a search in so I can see from that that I can actually put a search in and narrow it down before I spend some money so thank you for clarifying that for me yes no you don't have to and also I mean no. that helps. If you're looking for yep. somebody and you don't know if there's an event, you can search it quite narrowly and you can discover that there is no 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 event recorded and that way mm -hmm. and you don't spend any money to get a nil result. Great, that's, um, that's good. So New South Wales, you've got to put in dates. It doesn't work if you don't put in dates. Births are up to 100 years old, for example. And we can search now and there. So we get good information from New South Wales where we get the certificate number which you use to order but you also get you know who the father is and who the mother is and the district and so on so, so yes yeah. that, that was uh, essential that, viewing for Australian research yeah. <laughs> Queensland <laughs> they're Australia, wonderful yeah uh, and South Australia too Western Australia also has online indexes indexes yes yes that that's wonderful and their family search has some of the Tasmanian ones but unfortunately they're not indexed so they've got the some images up on family search but uh, you'd really need to know a, a date to um, plow through those I guess so yes. that that that's excellent, and uh, just uh, just a point. I don't know what happens in Victoria, but in New South Wales, there's a great bun rush every New New Year's Day because on New Year's Day at about twelve o one a.m., um, another another year's worth is, is added to the um, indexes. So I always head off and look for my puzzles and other strange names to see um, if there are any new records there, especially for the births. And digging up uh, distant cousins, <laughs> right? Donna, are you ready for another 
um, another go? For him? Um, yeah. You'll ha if, to get this one up on the screenshot, you'll have to do it for me if you wouldn't mind. Um, yeah, I'll have it. Yeah. Google Desert Column. And up the top of the Google search, there should be the Australian Light Horse Studies Centre. It's one so of those. what's that? Well, it's a really awful URL, so that's why I said if you just Google Desert Column. Yeah. Perth. Oh, sorry, I've I've gone and put Australian White Horse. No. So is this the World War Desert Column? Yep. And then it'll yep, come got it. Light Horse Studies Centre. Yep, got that. It's just um, slow. It's a great resource if you're looking for uh, more information re in, about battles involving uh, the Light Horse, which was a heck of a lot, um, over from the uh, Boer War onwards. Um, we were able to narrow there down... There you go. I've done it this time. <laughs> there it is, yeah. Um, it's yep. a horrible URL. I'll put it up on the, the um, thing later, but um, the easiest way to find it, I always find, is just to simply um, to Google Desert Column because that's what the blog is called. It has absolutely the best information that I've ever seen um, regarding yes. different battles and things. If you're looking for a particular ancestor, there's, there are, in some cases, lists of casualties. Um, the, my area of interest was the Imperial Camel Corps. Um, where my great grandfather's great grandfather, yes, my great grandfather's brother. No, my grandfather's great brother. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing today. Um, was killed, and the family story was that he was um, killed at Beersheba because he's buried at Beersheba. But as as it actually turns out, he was um, killed in a battle which occurred another 18 kilometres north of Beersheba, um, with a perfectly unpronounceable name. Uh, but there's, a, there's an enormous amount of uh, information there. If you have a look on the yeah. left hand page. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've got the camel. I've just got a blog post up. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Keep yeah, going. Right. But down on the left hand side, there's a, a yeah. really yeah. listing all the different places. So if you're looking for somebody, um, that's quite often where you might find them if they were in oh, okay. the, um, the Light Horse. And most of light our horse. World War I were called the Light Horse. Um, like I said, I was particularly interested in the Camel Corps, um, mm -hmm. but there's, there's just a, a, a massive amount of information. I mean, I haven't looked at all of it, but I, yeah, I know no. it's really useful if you're looking for somebody from those wars. Yeah, I know in our society we've got a um, group working on World War One, a World War One project. And that hasn't been um, mentioned as a resource, so I'll share that with them when I get off here. That that looks so valuable. Thank you. It's enormously That's really valuable. fantastic. Yep. I came across it quite by accident, um, mainly because mm -hmm. it's bizarre. Um, they really need to go and buy themselves the Desert Column URL, I think. But anyway. Yeah. That's the, that's fabulous. Do you have something else while you're there, or? No, not at Should I move on? No, no, that's okay. Um, we may go back to Chris again. I'm losing track of who I've asked and who I haven't asked. Chris, you've got plenty to share, I know. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, I do um, have another one up my sleeve. <laughs> and I'll just... Uh, <laughs> I just uh, it, this is probably one that most people know about, but it is no, the but Queensland Birth, Death and Marriages site. Yep, I know it's good mm -hmm. to share them all anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've, we've been quite excited to get this because I think Queensland was very slow in uh, coming on board with the online searching. Uh, we have had the microfish for many years and we um, you know, have had some CDs, but it's... it's um, it's lovely to actually have have the online search available, and uh, just recently we have been able to purchase historical certificates online, which we didn't have before, and they're gradually increasing um, the number of certificates that you can purchase all the time. So. Um, if you have a look at, at what it says here, it says it's free to search, so you can uh, can do your initial searches for free. 
A historical certificate is one that you can uh, buy and they will only send, mail you the copy but the okay. historical images you can download straight away so they're uh, a, a bit cheaper which is lovely as well. So um, it's uh, the cert actual search in here uh, you can uh, you put in uh, at least one name field so you can net surname blank. If you're searching for married women it's really nice the search that they've got now because you can put in the first name and you could can put in the father's name and um, bring up uh, the married name of the, of the woman. Um, you can put in a year range when you're searching for your births and deaths and marriages or you can put in the actual date or you can narrow it down because um, you may only know a year but if you then start narrowing down the search six months at a time you can eventually uh, get it down to the actual day. Yeah, I've already spent my money there. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 well, it, it, solved, it solved a mystery when they came online and I was able to get, yeah, so that, that's wonderful. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So nearly, ne nearly all the states are covered in Australia, which, which is wonderful. I'm going to jump across to my screen now and um, as Cousin Russ has suggested in the comments, uh, I've used plus to make the screen a bit bigger um, so people can actually see see what I'm sharing a bit better. It's the Australian Dictionary of Biography, the online version. It comes from the Australian National University. Um, unfortunately in my family there aren't many um, prominent people so <laughs> I haven't found many, I certainly haven't found any puzzles there but it um, lists eminent mostly people, um, says you know Prime Ministers, Governors General, Governors General, you know actors, ah Governor Generals, that's wrong, it should be Governors General, um, artists, actors, authors, all sorts of people, prostitutes, even thieves and murderers, so it's a, a cross-section of Australian society. So I wonder if uh, Tilly Devine, you just can put a name into the search engine up there. Tilly Devine was a prominent madam in Sydney um, when we used to drive past her house and my father used to always say that's Tilly Devine's house. It was in Maroubra. But uh, there we are, Matilda Mary Tilly Devine who was a prominent madam is found there and you'll find a lovely biography that gives you know, heaps of genealogical information, birth dates, you know, parents, etc, etc. So if you've got one of those and you know there's a nice life summary there and her occupation, brothel keeper, prostitute and underworld figure. And I think I'm on here, it brought me to a list of other prostitutes. Yes, so there you go. We've got, you know, a prostitute, a madam. Did you ever ask your father why he knew that house? Ah, because he was, he was a policeman. <laughs> so oh, <he'd>... right. yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Tilly was well known I think yeah <laughs> but anyway there we've got some a crime entrepreneur I think that's really lovely so the Australian Dictionary of Biography has national coverage that's uh, something worth looking at this is another something worth looking at and Cousin Russ I'll put a couple more pluses in and it's, it's the it's an honour website and it records people who have received um, gongs as we call them from the Australian government um, this is a list of the honours uh, um, or list of the you know you can read all about it that's not a list of the honours you know explanation of our honours systems um, and then honoured Australians um, and that's some but somewhere there's a search and I've lost the search there's the search here so I could actually put in someone related to me and I could have a look down and I can find that oh he's, I thought he was there he's somewhere there um, maybe it's not in alphabetical order but my husband's there somewhere anyway um, so it tells you you know 
what the person, um, which award they received and if you click on their name for some it gives a biography, for most it just gives this sort of, um, you know, date granted where they came from etc etc. I don't know if there's a particular icon, no, for people who um, have got a lot longer biography but there are two um, sites, this one's a government site. Um, that might dig up some biographical information or find some cousins for you. So now that's uh, it's an honour. Australia celebrating Australians, and for the Americans, um, this was the Australian um, awards were instituted oh, in the 1980s. We used to have the British Honours System, but uh, we ditched Great Britain and uh, set up our own. So Jenny, have you got something else now? No. Uh, yep. Yeah, I could show one other. Yeah, that'd be that'd be super. We did uh, briefly discuss this. Come on, come on. <laughs> Last month, I can't find it. Oh, never mind. Let's try this again. Biographical database of Australia. Oh yeah, it isn't. It isn't free, but it's only twenty-five dollars for a year. You can search That's for okay. free, but you can't do the results uh, without a, a thing a subscription. But if you put in a name and search, it's at the moment predominantly things like the early censuses and musters, but it have some parish registers and stuff like that. Um, and I'll just click on this one that is here. I had logged in earlier to my own subscription. So it gives you some information. Uh, this is from the 1828 census. Um, it will be, there will be new releases every so often with new information and because they've done a lot of work to try and link up people even with the different spellings of their names, it is a very useful resource. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I didn't find anything particularly new but I loved the reports it produced because it was for a lot of stuff I'd done years ago and I, you know, it seemed to put stuff together nicely in a PDF report. It was good. Yeah, and twenty dollars, hey. How many cups of coffee is that? Yep. Yeah, yep, that's right. I'm yep. just going to jump in again quickly because I spoke about prostitutes and so I must have a balanced um a balanced um presentation. So this one here um is called Ordinary Woman Extraordinary Lives an index and history of nuns and sisters of the Catholic Church in Australia from 1838 to 1918. Now if you like me had quite a number of Irish ancestors um, with big families it's um, possible that some of the girls entered the convent. I remember speaking to an old nun once who was looking after me in hospital and she said well I joined the convent because I knew I'd get a feed and a roof over my head. Um, so, and I think that's probably why many of them joined. Now, this isn't something you can search online, it's actually something that you download. So, it's a, um, a religious brother, I believe, in um, somewhere in Victoria, wherever St. Bede's may be, um, who has put together this database. And so, you just click on here and you can download the database and search for your um, families. Perhaps if you've got some Irish females that uh, you've lost track of, you may find that they uh, entered the convent and that they're mentioned on this database. So that's just a little antidote to my um, previous prostitute um, um, one. one. Oh, I don't know who that, is, who but that is, but Anne. Anne's ready. Yes, uh, hi, Jill. Oh, uh, someone has, has got, has got the, the, video the video showing, showing and we're hearing it with on delay. So it might be so you, Donna. Can you, Donna, mute, can you yourself? mute yourself? 
I think okay. I can. I think I've got to the iPad to the computer. So. Yeah, that's what's yeah, happening. That's You've what's got, both happening. got both going. Okay. Uh, this is the Australian War Memorial site, a free site, and you can search on people. Um, oh, no, I'm now clicking. No, I'm sorry, on. I've got. There you go. That's me, the cameraman. Uh, search on people, uh, and you can put in a name. Uh, I'll put in Clarite. Clarite. Again, and you can search all conflicts. And of course, coming up to the anniversary of World War One, um, you know we're quite interested in that sort of thing. But you can get the role of honour, the people who died on um, active service, and this is one of my husband's relatives. So you get the information very quickly about where he died, how old he was, where he came. What's really interesting is to look at these circulars and. Uh, they're, they're filled in by members of the family and they give where they went to school, what his calling was, so they're really quite interesting to read in conjunction with the uh, attestation forms that you get through the National Archives site that most people would know about. So if you have a person who served in World War One, you get a lot of information about them. Um, so this chap uh, was wounded in Gallipoli, but he died died in France. Uh, that, then just yeah. quickly, I've got the screen. I'll just show you an example of a will, I think. Uh, I'll close that. No, where's, where's this? Okay, this is an example of a will from uh, from the prof site, and this is also a plowright. And so this is the example of the PDF that you get to download if your person died before 1925. You get their will. Um, and they often, as you know, with wills can be really fascinating. Um, so that's that's it from me probably. That's We're running running close to time. That that that's fantastic. I didn't realise how late it was. I'm just going to quickly bring up my screen because we haven't um, mentioned the national archives in Australia. We've got the national archives that cover um, records, government records from the time of federation, and then we've got the state archives um, that cover records relating to the state. Um, now some things that became responsibilities of the national or federal government in 1901 like immigration, um, you'll find newer immigration records on the National Archives site but up until the time of Federation you need to go to the state archive sites for um, immigration information. So I've found some wonderful digitised records here. Two of my daughters in law have parents from overseas and I've been able to find the records of their migration to Australia or their parents' migration to Australia in the 1950s with wonderful information, photos, all sorts of things, medical records. The um, World War I um, digitised um, records of full military records are available on the National Archives site. All sorts of bits and pieces. Um, one can get a membership so it actually remembers for you what you've looked at. Um, or you, any Tom, Dick or Harry can just search this site in this box up here and Russ, I haven't plussed it. Um, so I'll just plus it so you can see the search box right up the top there. Um, and they have a great program of digitisation happening. So they've digitised all the World War One records and they're working on the World War Two records. You know, they've, this is probably a, um, yep, that's a uh, immigration file for Renato Di Toro who arrived in 1962 and that's 33 pages. So fantastic. Well, we're at 11.59. Um, We've only scratched the surface of the online resources that are available in Australia, but I'd like to thank Anne and Chris and Donna and Jenny for sharing with us today some of the resources they use. 
we'll put together a link, a list of um, links to those, and I'll blog about those and put a link on the Google Plus community page. Uh, I'll thank you for uh, joining in. Um, I had this at a US friendly time, but unfortunately it was uh, Thanksgiving Eve, so we haven't got any friends from the US uh, have joined us. But next time we will have the Hangout at a European friendly time. So it will be in an, on an evening in a fortnight, probably on the Tuesday night, but I shall check my calendar. And it will be, I think, a society spotlight where people can tell us, and I know what Chris will tell us about, um, people can tell us about their societies. So thank you one and all. And as dear Mert says, it's a wrap.